disconnect button nice and quick. Maybe you should bend another buddy too for bring, getting you to bring him in. What do you think? Yeah, what was the other guy's name? CTB. There you go. CTB. Okay. So, do we have a science or evolution believer and a Christian in this in this chat or this stage, whatever? <laughs> Uh, we all accept evolution as a matter of fact about our reality. Ola is an oh, evolutionary cool. biologist. That's, that's good. I I do not. <clears throat> so I'm gonna counter that. Is that okay? Um, what what do you? Um, I mean, let's say evolution is false. Now what? Okay. Well, I'm I'm gonna talk about that. So. Uh, I'm assuming y'all know who Bill Nye is, because Bill Nye does Yeah, Bill Nye isn't a biologist, so what does he have to do with evolution? Oh, no. Okay, he's an evolutionist. I mean, he yeah, accepts that's... evolution, I'm sure. Right, but... I mean, lots of people accept evolution, but they're not biologists, so I don't know why you're bringing him up. I mean, if you're going to critique something about evolution, ostensibly you would be attacking what actual biologists say on the subject, yeah. like P.C. Myers, Richard Dawkins, Kenneth Miller. I mean, yeah. Hey, well, do I you know who Ken Ham is? Process, but the, the point is that if you have a question, just ask the question. Yeah, I know who Ken Ham is as well. He's okay, a charlatan no, that makes money off of gullible people. But go ahead. Yeah, yeah, he's a con artist. No. He's been in jail before for uh, it. You know, no. No. Okay, hey, 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 it doesn't matter. These people these people are irrelevant. Do you do you actually have... Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll entertain it. Go ahead. Tell us why evolution is false. <clears throat> Because uh, evolution is not a religion; it is a science. I'm I'm not gonna I'm not trying to like change your beliefs or anything. I'm just it's going not to a say belief. that it's, uh, it's, evolution it's is not, something that that's also, just it's also uh, not a religion. Not, evolution it, it, it is, is demonstrable. We I mean nobody's nobody saying believes that evolution, evolution is a religion, except what? for creationists. <laughs> like. Again. It's just it's well, just something no. that you can see happening. So it's like, okay, it happens. It doesn't make it like a deity that we pray to. Yeah. Well, I'm assuming that y'all have done this for a while, and y'all have heard that uh, Charles Darwin's uh, thing started with "I think," and God's Bible is "I know." What? I mean, yeah. There's words in both things, except for have God's Bible seen that? was written in. Was not written in English, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, so so it was written hold on a second. Hebrew, a whole for one, all right, lag Lagmaster, for one, all right. Um there's no competition or mutual exclusivity between the existence of God or even the veracity of Christianity and evolution. Those are not mutually exclusive. The only reason why you would have a problem with those things if is if you are a young earth creationist. And if you're a young earth creationist, you have to battle every field of physical science. Not just evolution. Evolution is the least of your worries when it comes to defending that the Earth is less than 10,000 years old. Literally, bottom of the barrel. You have every other field of physical science mm -hmm. to go through before you get to that one. Okay. And they so all like, prove it wrong. Every one of them. What has been proven wrong? <laughs> that the Earth is only 10 to 60,000 years old. That's just demonstrably false. How is it false? Uh, do you want to make a case in an affirmation of what you believe, or are you trying to get us to uh, take on the burden of proof against what you're asserting as a fact? Because I'm willing to play the game. I mean, I'm just trying to Good. give you the opportunity to substantiate what you think is the case. Because, and, and, and I want you to just, for a moment, consider maybe that all of your objections to evolution and the rest of these fields of science are predicated upon your own misunderstanding of the subject, as opposed to some piece of brilliance that has escaped everyone in academia for the past few centuries. Yeah. Okay, I, 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 um, scientists I, I do, I've not studied it like y'all have not studied it. I mean, I, I, I haven't really studied it. I know what the average person should know about these subjects. The whole reason I have a panel is because I don't know a lot of this stuff, right? If somebody comes up in here and wants to talk about the Bible, or, or history or theology as far as Christianity is related, right? I'm the go-to for that. 
If somebody wants to talk about evolution, it's Ola. If somebody wants to talk about these uh, higher level philosophical matters, it's usually Andrew Crystal JL. And if somebody wants to talk about cosmology or physics, it's a sensei, right? And if somebody just wants to get, you know, uh, berated because they're dumb, it's 420. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, he also uh, kind of, you know, tag teams with JL on those things, but JL had to go, so. I mean, and like, it's the whole, the whole point is that there's, there's different perspectives, you know, like Ola is not an atheist, uh, Jack Burton is not an atheist either. So um, they have these, these ideas that they come in with to, to give a little bit of diversity, and so we're not all just echo chambering each other. But, I mean, for the most part here with evolution, I mean, this is, this is a, a model that explains a certain process which occurs in reality. Okay, yeah, would, and it's would, it's not one that is at odds at all with religious belief. The textbook author on evolution in North America is Kenneth Miller, who is a Catholic. Okay, this this is a man who fully believes that Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose from the dead and atoned for the sins of mankind, and yet he also believes that humans are modified apes. There, there's no conflict with that. I mean, unless you think that God that. has two hands and two feet and two eyes and a nose and a mouth and all that stuff, right? Then the whole God created us in His image thing is clearly metaphorical. We are a, we're physical. We we have an anatomy. God doesn't. Okay. So what Kenneth Miller yeah, interprets? Yeah, wait, it hold to on, me, hold on, hold on. Wait, can I, can I speak? Sure, go ahead. I agree with God not being an actual like being, but Jesus was, and He was one hundred percent God, and He was one hundred percent human. Okay, well, well being one hundred percent human also makes him one hundred percent an ape, and one hundred percent a mammal, and one hundred percent a semiform, and one hundred percent an animal. No, one hundred percent a mammal, one hundred percent a mammal, not an ape. Humans were not monkeys. Uh, okay, um, Lagmaster, what what do you can you give me right now a definition of ape which would include chimpanzees, orangutans, bonobos, and gorillas, but does not include humans? But you want me to like look one up or like off? Well, my the head? one doesn't exist. I'm a, that's why I'm asking you to give me one. See, this is the phylogeny challenge. Okay, creationists have for the last dec few decades been completely incapable of providing a distinction between these created kinds that they believe exist. Okay, that aren't related to other animals. Okay, so you have all these other apes, and they share all the taxonomic features of a human. They're also genetically identical to humans. Uh, over 90% of our DNA is shared amongst these other creatures. And uh, chimpanzees are our closest relative with over 96% of our DNA being shared with them. Right? And then we share Wait, a little I'm bit seeing, less than that. Yes. With, Hold on, I'm seeing this now. I'm seeing this what? now. Look. I'm seeing what you mean now. Like, there is a point where the, the road stops being one, where we split off on these things. Uh how did the apes get there is the good question how did they get there like they can't they evolved from other animals existence without something well like that isn't that the entire creationist idea that everything popped into existence out of nothing because god said something the god was already there god is, is sure god was already there but what was he affecting what did he create the universe all. out of Okay, I, I, let, let's put it this way. Okay, I'm going to provide you the analogy that I provide everybody in this, in this conversation. All right. Um, so you have a situation where you have God, okay, um, and he creates the universe, right? Out of what is the question? It doesn't make any sense to cause something which doesn't exist to do anything because it doesn't exist. If you, for example, were to build a table, okay, you would be the efficient cause. You're the initiator or the actor which is starting this cause and effect relationship. Then you have the material cause, the medium by which you are affecting. So this would be like wood, glue, lacquers, nail, the tools that you're using. Okay. And then you reassemble all of that stuff to become a table, which is the formal cause. Okay. Now apply that to the situation with God and the universe. God is the efficient cause. Okay. The starter of the relationship, the universe is the formal cause, the ultimate effect of the relationship. What is the material cause? What is God acting upon to create the universe? So, can't, can't you just accept the fact that he thought it? Well, it I, I don't accept existence? that it's a fact. No, because that's incoherent. You, you just yourself asserted that something cannot pop into existence out of nothing, and now you're attempting to defend that very claim. 
Look, there is the, the basis of all religion is faith, and that is just something that some people cannot accept, like you guys. You can't accept the fact, or the, the fact, the fact that 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 God created the heavens and the earth. From thin well, air. it's a logical it contradiction. Didn't have to be, there didn't have to be a material cause. God was not human. Okay, if there didn't have he to be a material cause, Lagmaster, if there didn't have to be a material cause, there didn't have to be an efficient cause. All right, what you're arguing now is that uh, it's perfectly acceptable to hit a home run without using a ball, but it's not acceptable to hit a home run without using a bat. Which is just absurd. They're both they're both incoherent. Okay, so I don't have a problem with this thing which always existed. Okay, but if God created the universe by the definition of the word create, He had to be using something to do that. It is a logical contradiction to affect nothing and achieve an effect. There's no relationship there. Cause and effect is a relationship. Okay, you can't have a relationship with things that don't exist. If God does not adhere to the laws, of, the laws of logic, the way that everything else which exists does, then there's no distinction between the existence of God and the non-existence of God. So, hold on. I'll ask, I'll ask one more question, then I'll go. I understand what you're saying completely, but I'll ask one more question. Do you, do ever, does everyone on this panel believe that Humans make mistakes. Yes. Of course. Okay. Well, that's why, uh, which, what's his name? Uh, Charles Darwin, he made a mistake. What was his mistake? That book. Writing the whole entire book. Okay, well, where's the factual error in The Origin of Species? What's funny is here is that I can actually name a few factual errors, but I'm confident that you can't because it's likely the case you've never even read it. So what is the factual error? Yeah. Everything. Everything? Okay, so um, is it a factual error that species don't adapt to their environment? Okay, wait. Adaption... Is, Adaption is a mechanism of evolution. Is, is okay, of, so you just said you just no, said that not. everything that is in the Origin of Species is false. One of the things in the book, The Origin of Species, is the process of adaptation. And yes, it is a, it is a mechanism of evolution. Okay, Ken Ham and Kent Hovind have lied to you. They don't understand evolution. They don't care to understand evolution. If you go to the website Answers in Genesis, which is run by Ken Ham. He has a statement of faith wherein he admits he will not accept any evidence whatsoever, which contradicts his interpretation of the Bible. He is not interested in what is actually true. He's interested in making money off the backs of gullible people. Answers in Genesis hauls in $22 million a year. They spent $100 million to create an ark modeled after the story in the, New, the Old Testament, and hilariously enough, they couldn't even put it on the water because something that big made entirely out of wood wouldn't float. Then they attempted to put a live zoo inside of the ark, and they realized that that itself wasn't possible, because even with the advent of modern technology, such as air conditioning systems and ventilation, everybody would have died of methane poisoning within just a few hours, because you put that many animals on a boat in an enclosed space with only one window, there's no escape for the gas. And so all the animals inside the ark are animatronic, with a few exceptions of like a small petting zoo here and there, of tiny animals. But they didn't put any elephants on the ark. They didn't put any carnivores on the ark, like back lions then. and tigers and whatnot. No, 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 no. There is no back then exception to this, okay? According to the story, yes, God put two of every There's... single species of animal on the ark. There are 6.7 million different terrestrial species alive today. So either you believe that there was some 12 to 13 million animals on the ark, which is just mathematically impossible given the amount of space, or you believe in some sort of hyper hypercharged turbo ultra fast evolution, wherein all the available species of every single uh, genera and family of animal on the planet evolved from two base pairs over the period of just four thousand years. I said like. Evolution isn't even the biggest of your worries when it comes to uh, young earth creationism. So, 
man, I already got lost in your words, man. I can't. I don't have a reply to that because I. Okay, so a bunch in that account. how many animals were on the ark? See, this is some of the stuff you don't know. Like y'all are already talking about this. How uh, you you just don't know. You have to ask God. You have to ask Him. Okay, I, well, I'm willing to, to the story, bet. I'm willing to bet. Not, you're willing to bet what? I'll take your money. I'm willing to bet that. All right, all right, all right. Um, so you you know how there's like different dog breeds. Like if you mix two breeds, you get a mutt. And it's they're different, right? And you mix it goes on and on and on as a chain reaction between them breeding, and you get different dogs, right? Yeah, that's evolution. So, the, so basically, no, it's not. It's debate. Yes, it is evolution. Okay, actually, it's actually, Master, Hold on, I want you to tell me what evolution is before you try to tell me what it's not. So, what is evolution? I don't know. I didn't study it like you. Guys. Then how the hell could you possibly know what it isn't? Because Ola, you're the evolutionary biologist. Facts. Okay, this is a person who has studied biology and evolution in an academic setting. Okay, between her and a preacher, who do you think has more understanding of the subject? Of what subject are you talking about? Evolutionary biology. Well, obviously the evolutionary biology because all they studied was bullshit, which is the evolution. Sorry, How do you know, so Lagmaster, you just said you don't even know what it is. How do you know it's not true? Uh, Cersei's. Yeah, it's, you have to, in order to understand it, like, I went to school to study evolutionary biology, and more specifically anthropology, where you have to look, if you're looking at archaeology, and you're looking at fossils, and you're looking at these things, in order to deduce our history you can you can see evolution happening in the fossil specimens you can also see it happening in other things it's like a principle so like i was explaining to somebody earlier we used to have uh, evolutionary studies seminars where we'd invite people that had published journals in all different um, aspects in sociology in psychology um in even art and we even had a rapper come in and <laughs> What we would do is we would talk to people about how the concept of evolution can be applied to other things. So, like, the artist even came in, and the artist had decided to apply evolutionary mechanisms to their artwork. So, instead of going to the drawing board, they don't like what they did, they just scrap the whole thing and then do something completely new, they would create a bunch of things. They'd have some stuff that they liked and some stuff that they didn't like. And so they would keep the things that they liked and scrap the things that they didn't. And then the next time around, they would replicate the things that they liked and they'd add in a couple other random things. And then the next generation, they would take out some of those things that they didn't like and they'd add in some more. So what you end up having when they put up the exhibit and you put all of these artworks next to each other, you could literally see the evolution of the artwork and how they changed from one form, they were like sculptures from one form of the sculpture to the end product. And that is basically like a metaphor. Like that's all evolution is. It's like some things work in each generation and some things don't work. And the things that work continue on and the things that don't work don't. That's it. It's not something that's like more loaded than that. It's just a process. It's a, it's a logical way of looking at things. So when we say, like, and I, humans are apes, it's because we can look logically and see how much stuff we have in common with our closest and uh, our closest cousins that are currently living, which are chimpanzees and bonobos, um, and they're also very closely related to each other, and we can see, we can track our history, and if we look at fossils, we can see these kind of intermediary um, things that are, like, not quite like them and not quite like us, but we have some stuff in common, and we have also some new traits that are not in common. So that's all evolution is. It's not like this loaded thing. It's not there to attack Christianity. It's just what we see. And if you don't want to believe it's real, then sure, you can do that. But you're just, you're, you're like, you're, you're avoiding reality that we can see. So, you know, that's up to you. But that's all. All right, well, if you studied, uh, I think we all, 
in school studied uh, like the Egyptology of how like all the crazy things Egyptians did, like how they buried themselves in pyramids. It, it, it's it's the same thing. How did Egyptians build pyramids without cranes? But Noah also built an ark that floated without cranes. Okay, so the difference is that, well, first well, of all, a pyramid I, I, is a solitary stationary structure that's uh, one layer built on top of the next. That's a very easy structure to build. And the Egyptians aren't the only ones who built them. There's Chinese pyramids, and there's also Mayan pyramids in South America. All right? It's, it's not a difficult structure to build. It's especially not difficult when you have tens of thousands of people working on it together over the course of several decades. Now, uh, compare that to Noah and his singular family of eight people who are all unskilled, untrained laborers who would have needed to get the resources available to build this thing, which ostensibly God would have provided them with. But then they had, according to the story, about 120 years to build it. So God waited 120 years to flood the earth. Uh, after they got it built, then he put two of every think, kind. Think, listen, Leg. Then he put two of every kind of animal on it. Do you think okay. it took him a billion years to build a pyramid? Do you think it took him a billion years to build a pyramid? I literally just said over the course of several decades. A decade is 10 years. But they don't have cranes. It take, that's, too, that's too fast. There's no way. Does it require? Especially since, hold on a second, uh, Lagmaster. Right now, I want you. According to the Lagmaster, Bible, Lagmaster, no, no, Lagmaster, listen to me. Do you need a crane to put one object on top of another? Need a crane? To, no, but okay. Well, also, the slaves. Um, the scaffold is the way. The way. No, 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 no. The I got slaves. A question. I want to ask him a question. Hold on a second. No, wait, can I finish what I'm saying, please? Can I finish? Oh, that's, why I, that's, that's why I just told him to hold on so that you can finish what you're saying. All right, all right, look. Um, we all know that slaves built the pyramids in Egypt, right? No. no. Who the fuck built them? Hired workers. Egyptian workers. No. No, yes, no, Israelite slaves who no. left Egypt. For, first of all, first of all, hold on a second, Lagmaster, uh, the Bible doesn't even say that the Israelite slaves built the pyramids. And do you know why that's just an, an asinine thing to say? Because the pyramids were built way before the Israelites ever went into Egypt. By almost a thousand years. Not only that, but they actually uncovered the, the township that the workers used, and recovered the pottery and literally everything about this and resolved that these were well cared for workers and not slaves by any means so no no slaves built the pyramids workers built the pyramids in honor of their pharaoh i mean it's possible well there may have been some slaves participating in this um but the overwhelming majority first of all it's what just time? untenable to get that many slaves um, they would revolt no, and rise up and fight against people. The Israelites multiply very fast. Okay, Lagmaster, that's why that story is false. The Exodus did not happen. Not even most Jews no. still accept that it actually occurred. Again, you're presupposing that the Bible is true with what it says. Okay, so whenever reality disagrees with the, with the Bible, your assumption is that reality is wrong. But as far as the pyramids being built, okay, you can build scaffolds to get high places, right? According to your own story, uh, in Genesis, people were trying to build a tower so high to reach the heavens, and that scared God, and so he had to confuse their language. Well, they didn't have any cranes, okay? My point was not that modern technology prevents, uh, or that, that the lack of modern technology prevented the ark from being built. Given enough time and people, yeah, they could build it. Could it have floated? No. Not with its size and structure, it could not have. We're talking about just a giant wooden box. The, the wood would have warped and cracked uh, without, you know, you know, steel reinforcements or bilge pumps. This thing would have sank in an instant. So the only thing you can say against that is that it, God just magicked it away. But if you're going to go with the magic explanation, yeah. which a lot of creationists you do... Wanna get, you want to get factual. You want to get I factual just, about the, the arc. Uh, the Ark was made out of a very, very lightweight material, and it the Ark was also a miracle. It's wood, so no, no, that no, no. also came into play. Trust the, me, the Ark was made out of yeah, wood, which is not necessarily lightweight. But according to the the story, it was made out of gopher wood, 
which uh, we don't really know what, what, what wood they were referring to when they said gopher wood, go, gopher wood because we use different terminologies for different kinds of wood these days. <clears throat> so um, it probably would have been cedar because that was the most common tree in the Middle East at the time. Um, oh, thank you, guys. That's what I heard, too. If, if, if this actually happened at all. But here's the thing. The Noah's Ark flood myth is just a variation of other flood myths throughout that region because everybody lived near giant bodies, bodies of water back then. And so when storms happened, floods would happen. Giant floods happen all the time, all around the world, but they're never global deluges. Um, there's so many different constraints on all of this happening, physiological constraints, that it could not have happened without God just violating all the laws of nature. But that, I mean, if you want to go that route, that's exactly. fine, but that's just you, that is just God, you admitting, okay, again, the you lack, that's just you admitting that there's no evidence this occurred, okay? Even even if we could, you could say it could have happened based on X reason that, you know, God could have magicked away all these philosophical or uh, physiological constraints, it didn't happen. The evidence for a flood that massive would be overwhelming, found everywhere around the world, and every geologist on the planet would know affirmatively that it occurred. <clears throat> we don't see that. Just a rudimentary undergraduate understanding of geology would tell you that the global flood never happened. Okay. You're believing all the Greek <clears throat> myths and Roman myths that are about the flood. The flood wiped out all of them. Or I, any there's, of those myths were even, were even existence. No, uh, no, Lagmaster, no, they didn't. Uh, because according to no. Lagmaster, even according to people like Kim Ham, the flood happened about 4,000 years ago, right around 25 to 2400 BCE. Okay. There were already cultures established around the world at that time. You had the Chinese, you had the Egyptians, you had the Yazidis, okay? There were people on the other side of the world, like in, 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 the, uh, in the Mayans and the, uh, the Aztecs and the Incas and whatnot, uh, or whatever their ancestors were, because we don't have a lot of historical records from how long they were there, okay? And none of those cultures record the same flood happening. They all seem to live right through it without ever noticing that they were underwater. Right. Okay. Yeah, the main you guys have to explain... You would have to explain how eight people spread across the world into all these different cultures, picked up right where they left off, okay, and then just continued on. Eight people did all that. They went to different parts of the globe, separated by thousands and thousands of miles, all right, and then they they found all these cultures that the the Egyptians and the Chinese and the Yazidis were practicing, and they just picked up where they left off, forgetting that their one true God just wiped everybody out off the face of the earth. And they went right back because to worshiping. He was the only good person out there because he is the only good. His family was the only good person. And also, it was not just eight people. Well, that, 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 it was more than eight people the because the men built the ark. There was eight men, and do you realize the rest of the, the were you realize, women and how children? How many man hours was it that it took to build the ark park? Sir? Well, it doesn't. It, that doesn't. That's not entirely relevant. Again, magic is let's, the explanation, of course. Let's just have a leave, little bit even more fun with this. You talk like you're talking about the Tower of Babel. You, we talked about the Tower of Babel. You would for the tower for you to believe in the Tower of Babel, you would literally have to believe that the that mm -hmm. heaven is the clouds above you, because the, if God was so f a fearful of it, you would have to believe that heaven is literally the clouds that are above you. But we know that's not they real. They were, they were. Yeah, it's not real. The, the heaven is. So then, why higher. would God be afraid of the of humans building a tower to the clouds? Yeah, we. Got I mean, really, power. these yeah. are just superstitious stories. Because it's it's the devil. There's the blame. Inside of them, telling them that it's, it's there. the devil. Okay, so this isn't going to go anywhere. We're going to have to go ahead and move on. Thanks for coming up, man. Yeah.